Hello everyone and welcome back to the Nerd Cave. Today's tutorial we will learn how to use the L29N motor driver module with the Raspberry Pi Pico. We will look at how to connect this module to the Pico to control two motors. In the first example we will let the motors turn full speed in either clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. And in example 2, see how can we use PWM to control the speed of the motors using this PlayStation 2 joystick. The L29N comes in different packages depending on the module, but the most common one you will see in every DIY video will look like this. We have the motor power input pin VCC here in the front, which takes an input of 5V to 35V with a peak current up to 2A. The input next to it has a common ground with all the power supplies. There is also a 5V pin which can either be an input or an output. This depends on the voltage used at the motor's VCC. The module have an onboard 5V regulator which is either enabled or disabled using a jumper. If the supply voltage VSS is between 5 to 12V, we can enable the 5V regulator and the 5V pin can be used as an output, for example for powering our pickup board. But if the voltage supply is greater than 12V, we must disconnect the jumper because those voltages will cause damage to the onboard 5V regulator. In this case, the 5V pin will be used as an input as we need to connect it to the 5V power supply for the IC to work correctly. You should also note that the IC makes a voltage drop of about 1.5 to 2V. For example, if we use 7.59V as our input voltage, the voltage at the motor terminals will be around 5.75V, which means that we won't be able to get the maximum speed out of our DC motor due to the voltage drop. Next are the logical control inputs. The enable A and enable B pins are used for enabling and controlling the speed of the motor. If a jumper is present on this pin, the motor will be enabled and work at maximum speed. And if we remove the jumper, we can connect a PWM input. In that way, we can control the speed of the motor. If we connect this pin to ground, the motor will be disabled. Next, the input 1 and 2 pins are used for controlling the rotation direction of motor A and the input 3 and 4 for motor B. If input 1 is low and input 2 is high, the motor will move forward. If input 1 is high and input 2 is low, the motor will move backward. In case both inputs are the same, either low or high, the motor will stop. The same applies for the inputs 3 and 4 to control motor B. We will connect the module as indicated on a schematic diagram for our first demonstration. Make all the necessary connections as shown. After making all the connections, head over to my GitHub repository, link given in the description, where I have included all the code for each example we will discuss. Open example.py and copy all the code, and then inside Phony, create a new file and paste the code. Let's look at the code together. We start by importing the pen module from the machine library and import a time module for creating delays. We define all the input pins and enable pins as output according to our schematic. Since we will not be using PWM to control the speed, we can set the enable pin A and B to high. We then create four functions for the movement of the motors to either turn clockwise or anti-clockwise. We define a function move forward and set the pins to low or high as indicated. If you find that one motor turns in the opposite direction due to the connections, you can change the pins low and high or swap the wires connected to the motor. We define a function move backward and set the pins as indicated which is the opposite than the move forward function. In the following two functions, turn right and turn left, we will set one motor off by setting both its input to low and turn the other one either to the right or left, depending on the function. We define a function stop to stop all the motors and set all the input pins to low, but you can also set this to high. Now we can create an endless loop to call the functions as needed with a delay. In this example, we move the wheels forward for two seconds and stop, then rotate the wheels backward for 2 seconds and stop and we will do the same for right and left before the loop repeats itself. Uploading the code to the Pico, we can see that the motor is turning as indicated in the code. This code is a good start for creating an autonomous robot car for a project. In the last example, we will use the thumb joystick to control the direction of the motor and the speed using PWM. 
add the joystick to your circuit as shown in the schematic diagram and open example 2 in the GitHub repository. We start by importing pin, ADC and PWM from machine. We then set up pin 27 and 26 as analog inputs for our joysticks X and Y axis. We define the module input pins but we will set them as PWM for enable A and B. For the frequency of the PWM, we will set it to 1500 Hz. We again define the functions move forward, backward and stop and this time we will use the move forward to control the right turn and left turn. In our endless loop, we will read the X value and the Y value for our joystick which fluctuates. The X and Y values we receive are between 32,000 to 34,000. We can then use an if statement to call the stop function if we receive values in this range. If we push the joystick all the way backward, we will receive a value of 65,535 and all the way forward we will receive 400. Using this information, we create an if statement to test if the Y value is greater than 34,000. If this is true, we will convert the value we receive into a duty cycle that we will send to both enable A and B which will then move backward with a certain speed depending on how far the joystick has been pressed. With this, we can now control the speed of the motors. We will do this for move forward and turn right and left. If you are interested in knowing how the calculations were done, I will upload a detailed description of this topic in a GitHub repository. Uploading this code to the Pico, we can now control the motor's direction and speed with the joystick. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. And for more content on the Raspberry Pi Pico and tutorials, subscribe to my channel. I will see you in the next video.